Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Oxygen for the Soul. Um, this week's Pasha, Pasha Teruma. And, um, you know, again, uh, we just, uh, just to recap very quickly, we just finished reading Pasha Mishpatim, and we ended with God commanding Moses to come down with uh, the, uh, to come, to go up, actually, to get the uh, tablets, to get the Torah and the mitzvot. And, uh, and then we transition straight from uh, last week into this week's Pasha, where, we're taught, where God asks us, to uh, make a contribution. God speaks to Moses saying, Speak to the uh, children of Israel. You should take from me a truma, a contribution. Uh, from each and every person who hearts inspires him to uh, generosity. You shall take uh, my, um, you know, uh, truma, my contribution. Now, this is a fascinating verse because, you know, it asks, it begs us to ask all kinds of questions. Well, the question is like this. Well, why does God need a contribution at all? I mean, he is the, uh, he's an infinite being. Uh, he require he has everything you could possibly imagine. Does he really need my uh, contribution, my $18? Does he need me to go ahead and give the diamonds, the rubies? Or is that really important? Is that what this is about? Why is he asking the Jewish people to go ahead and make this contribution? All too often we find that, you know, Judaism um, and religion in general has been turned into uh, some sort of a uh, money-making uh, machine where everything has a dollar value, where everything it costs something. Um, it's hard to wrap our minds around it. Well, isn't Judaism a spiritual pursuit, uh, a way of getting closer to God? And why is... Why is this money? What does this money have to do over here? So let's try to understand this a little bit, a uh, little bit deeper. It says like this: Rashi, our uh, 10th century commentator, says, truma." He says, "Li lishmi, take this, these contributions for whom? For me, for my name." Well, what does that mean? For me and for my name? Who else is it for, uh, if not for you? So let's ask this: When when the Jewish people were at Mount Sinai. And God said, and God said to the people, would you like my Torah? What do the Jewish people say? They said, we will, we will uh, do and we will listen. Which basically means that we'll do whatever you say. We don't need to know the details. And it's kind of like this. If you were to call me, if Daniel was to call me and said, Rabbi, you know what? I really need a favor. I would say right away, okay, well, I'm done. Whatever it is, I'll do it. What you, Daniel would say, well, what do you mean, Rabbi? I, I didn't even tell you what it is. It doesn't matter. I love you. I care about you. And, uh, you know, I'm happy to help you any way that I can. So um, that's similar to what the Jewish people, uh, <laughs> that's similar to what the, uh, the Jewish people had said to God about Sinai. God, like you just took us out of Egypt. You, we saw these 10 amazing uh, miracles that happened in, in, the, uh, in Egypt. We, you split the sea and, um, you know, um, whatever you want. We'll just say, we'll do it right away. So God challenges the Jewish people this week. I'll explain to you how. Um, you know, if I was to go ahead and uh, give you a job, okay? If I was to go ahead and give you a job and you're making a million dollars a year, and then, and then I'd come back to you and I would say to you, hey, you know, um, can you make a donation? I'm trying to raise money for the synagogue, you know? And that person said, I'm so sorry, no, I'm not, I'm not really interested. I, I, I'm good, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna make a donation. Well, would I have the right to be somewhat frustrated and upset with that person when I went out of their way to go ahead and, and support them and by finding this job? And the answer is yeah. And the truth is that when, when people speak about money, there's something about money that makes things real for us. How much focus and attention do you have when someone's giving you money and now you're counting the money and you're like, oh, okay, well, uh, is this a thousand dollars? Is it clear? You want to check it, make sure it's all there. You know, someone's giving you something very precious, something that has a lot of value to it. What are you doing? You're looking through it to make sure that it's all, it's, it's all 100% there. It's all, it's all accounted for. Why is it with uh, money? What is it about money that forces us to kind of like keep our focus and attention in a way that's so different than anything else that we're engaged in? Why does money grasp us that way? Well, money is real. Money forces us to, uh, you know, uh, make things uh, that it shows us the importance of things. We trade our life for money and therefore we take money very seriously. So when people ask for you to contribute, to give back, to donate, right? When they're asking you to be involved in something, 
That's their way of asking you, do you really believe in what I am doing? You know, I've had the privilege of running, you know, organizations, working in not-for-profit, being on the fundraising side, and I can tell you how many times I've reached out to people who I've helped and in, was involved in supporting and encouraging and educating. And when it came, push came to shove, we're asking like a small donation, the answer was no. Even though, by the way, they would brag no problem. Oh, my business, I'm killing it, Rabbi. I'm making so much money. It's so good. It's amazing. It's, it's just, I'm killing it. Oh, really? You're killing it? I, I'm, you know, the synagogue needs, you know, new chairs. Are you, can you, can you, can you no, no, I'm not killing it. It's not real. It's like in stock. I didn't cash out of it. There's tax consequences. You know, there's something about giving, asking for money that makes things somewhat more tangible for us. So what does God do in this week's parsha? Oh, now I said, Nishma, you guys are ready to do everything. You're ready to go ahead and, uh, and do whatever I ask for. Are you willing to put your money where your mouth is? Take teruma. I want to see if this is real for you. Are you willing to pay for it? Are you, are you willing to invest in it? Are you willing to support this in a way that is meaningful? If the answer is, yeah, then it's real. It, it says, listen, look, listen, listen to how the verse writes it. It says, Daber el bene Israel, speak to the Jewish people, v'yikhu li teruma. It's interesting. It says, v'yikhu li teruma. Take it for me. If you're taking it, then it's not a contribution. You're just, you're forcing it on them. But then it says, take it, mi et kol eish asher yidabenu libo. Take it from every person whose heart compels him to give. V'tikhu et shumoti. Take my truma. It's interesting, right? Because like it's just like it's just like it's like written in a very strange way. If you were telling someone to go ahead and give something, you'd just give it. Like, but no, there's something else. Something compels us to give. Do you feel an obligation to give back? I was just uh, in the uh, office uh, with my uh, with one of my uh, colleagues, Rabbi Shlomo Farhi, and he was telling this amazing uh, story that his dad, this allegory that his dad uses of a uh, a man who had just given a gift to his friend. He gave him this box of Ferrero Rochers, and there's 24 Ferrero Rochers in this box. And the guy receives the gift, and uh, the guy that gave the gift to this friend says, listen, you know, I'm, it's kind of weird, I'm kind of embarrassed to ask you this, but do you mind giving me a Ferrero Rocher? I'm like, I'm really hungry. Now, imagine the guy that received the gift says, no, I'm not giving you my Ferrero Rochers, you just gave this to me as a gift, I'm not sharing it with you. Right, what a chutzpah, right? This is the same thing over here. God gives us 24 hours a day, right? God gives us a career. He gives us the ability to earn a living. He gives us the potential, the power to support ourselves. Do we feel obligated? Do we feel a sense of responsibility for caring for the world that's around us? Do we feel a sense of ownership over the things that are happening around us? Or are we just living in a reality where we're just taking from society? You wanna understand why so many people are concerned about whether or not we have enough resources to support life on planet Earth, whether or not, there's enough, whether or not people should be having children or having large families is irresponsible. You wanna understand where all of that comes from? It comes from one very simple place. You see, most people on planet Earth believe that the purpose of life is to consume. It's consumption. It's what I take from the planet. And you're right. If the world that we are living in is just about consumption, we're in trouble. We're in major trouble. There's not enough resources on the planet Earth. But that's not what God created the world for. You see, he created the world for humanity to love. The creation itself was an act of kindness. How do we act in a kind way? Well, how do we give back? How do I support? <coughs> love at its core, the word ahava comes from the word have to give. Love at its core means I have a deep rooted desire to give unconditionally. If we raise our children, our families, our communities, our societies to be lovers of life, we create a world where there's infinite amount of resources, not a shortage of resources, because every person sees it as their obligation to give back to the planet, to give back to the world. But <clears throat> if you're right, and it's a sad fact that we do live in a society, in a world where it's only about taking, then there's not enough. So God says, no, he said, we have to create people that are challenged to give. So there's a command to give, <clears throat> and we have to evolve into human beings and individuals that see the value of supporting things around us. 
<coughs> of having a heart that feels libo, whose heart is compelled to give back. We say the word giving in Hebrew, Natan, as a palindrome. You can read it backwards and forwards because whenever you're giving, you're always getting. So on a, on a selfish reason, I'll tell you all, people are feeling unhappy and depressed. You know what you should do when you're feeling unhappy and depressed? Don't go to a party. Don't go out and buy yourself an ice cream. Go out and buy someone else an ice cream. Go out and support someone. Give, do an act of chesed. Do an act of kindness. Go out and, and help someone you know, with whatever it is they're struggling with. That's how we make the world greater. Now, what's interesting is that if you flip through these parashiyot, it talks about the true that you're supposed to give, right? Give the money, the gold, the silver, the copper, the different types of fabrics and so on and so forth, different kinds of stones. And then God asks us to take these materials and transform them into the different vessels that are found in the tabernacle. God is asking us to build him a home. The yikhuli tiruma, right? So give me the truma. Why? Because I want you to be a vishachanti betocham. I want you to be holy so that I could... Uh, I want you to be holy so that I could dwell amongst you. The shechandi betocham, right, in the plural, okay? So we have a world where you and I have the power of bringing God into the world. How do we bring God into the world? I'm sorry for all the beeping. We bring God into the world by being people that are able to give back to society. When we become lovers of, of humanity, when we become individuals that want to contribute, what happens? God dwells among us. And therefore, where is God's name? Betocham, in you. We talk about this idea of sanctifying God's name. Do you know how you sanctify God's name? Not by becoming a, mar a martyr, by blowing yourself up for your cause. You sanctify God's name by becoming a magnanimous human being that cares for humanity, that is a lover of life someone who is a student of, uh, of, of, of knowledge, someone who sees the potential and the beauty in humanity, someone who's working on themselves to become more patient, loving, caring, and giving. That is how we express godliness in the world. The power, the externalities are irrelevant, and I'll prove it to you. Do we have any of these vessels today? The answer is no. There is no Mishkan. There is no tabernacle. There is no Aaron. There is nothing. All those external physical things, while they had value, <coughs> representing godliness in this world. But ultimately, where does God reside? He resides in us. And the way we're able to bring God into the world is when we recognize that there's godliness in everyone around us, in our spouse, in our children, in our friends, in our neighbors, in the congregants, in your, in your synagogue. Wherever it is that you're going, there's something divine there. People are so unhappy today because they're looking for happiness in the wrong places. Happiness cannot be found in things that you can measure and touch. Real, those, those things, by the way, are important. But those things generally become a distraction. The things that, that really bring you true happiness, the things that bring you joy, are things that can't be bought with money. These are things that are immeasurable. Love, a kindness, are things that are eternal that can never be taken away from you. And I think more than that, there's, there's something much more profound here. You see, so many of us become so excited about doing things, right? But then again, when push comes to shove, the money aspect, that's like, wait a minute, I wanna do this, but I gotta put money into it, I'm not doing it. That's a good business idea, but it's too much money for me to invest in. It's a famous story of um, Rav Chaim of Velazhin, who was a rabbi who lived in, in Europe, and he went to his rabbi, the Vilna Gaon, and said to him, Rebbe, you know, I want to start a yeshiva. I'm, you know, I'm so excited, this and that. And uh, Vilna Gon said, not a good idea. Come back, you know, let me think about it. And he was shocked. Rechaim of Elijah was shocked that the Vilna Gon didn't like jump up for joy and didn't share the same excitement. And 30 days later, he comes back to him and says, you know what? I have a plan now. This is how I want to do it. And then the Vilna Gon says, you know what? Now you're ready. So he asked the rabbi, like, why is it when I came to you, you know, 30 days ago, you said no, and now you're saying it's okay. So he said, 30 days ago, you came to me with all this excitement. You came to me with all this like inspiration. And while inspiration is important, it's not how we build things. The way we create things, the way we build things requires cerebral strategy, requires us to pause and reflect and to come up with a plan. This is how we create. This week's Parsha is all about the details of planning and building. You were so excited about receiving the Torah. <coughs> you were so excited 
<coughs> excuse me, about na'asev nishma. So let's challenge you. Are you willing now to be methodical and working through the details to bring godliness into this world? It's too easy to go to Disneyland and forget what life is about. It's too easy to go to work day after day, make money, and, uh, and, and think that that is what, where success is being measured. It's not. The real mark of greatness is your ability, your desire to love yourself in a way that it gives you the power of giving back to the world around you. Not just giving unconditionally and just giving and giving and giving. That will destroy you. You have to, you have to put something back inside of yourself. So what's the message? The message is become a human being that is so filled with clarity about what your mission and purpose is. Allow that to overflow into the world. And this way you bring the divine spirit, the soul of God, so to speak, into the world around us. That's what this is. God is infinite. There is no space that can hold him. God is immovable. He can't be moved. The only thing that can change is where my heart resides. He creates a world of infinite possibility and potential. And the only thing he's asking you is, how much are you willing to invest into this world that I've created for you? May you be blessed with a power of understanding that you are an infinite being with the potential of achieving anything you set your mind to. Don't allow the trappings of the material world to distract you from what's truly, what's, what it means to truly be you. Spend some time thinking deeper about what you really want, where your real happiness comes from. And you'll find that when you're able to move beyond your own needs of taking and become a true lover of life, a giver, Natan, the palindrome happens. Natan goes backwards and forwards. It's reverse giving. You're giving, but you're always getting back. Shabbat Shalom and have an amazing week. Thank you so much for tuning in. God willing, we'll see you all next week. Thank you.